politics, politics, politics. Um, um, let's, how can I do? Let's, let's just do uh, three political things that's, ha that's ha happening or happened recently. What is happening? Uh, one, of course, is uh, the situation in Zimbabwe, um, where um, uh, the president, for a long time president, got to, I don't say, they, they call it a political correction? Ah, whatever it is, get the polls, or whatever it is. Okay, I mentioned before, I think, uh, that uh, we did have a situation where uh, uh, if they would have called it a coup, then all kinds of international things would have happened. Uh, anyway, the, the, the long shot is that his, his deputy, deputy vice president, the, the, his right-hand man, right, basically had exiled from the country for a second, right? Talking about Robert Mugabe's right-hand man, the one that was with him through all, through thick and thin from the very beginning, and did that, people say did genocide and whatever have you. Well, that's, that's documented. Um, and then uh, the military, which has always been the power anyway, the military uh, um, basically says, hey, Uncle Bob, you got to go. Uh, plus, you know, we're not, we're not into your wife, you know, that the, the, the South African wife uh, taking over the, the, the country and then leaving a legacy for them, them disobedient children that she got, you know, to choke out. No, we're not into that, so that's not going to happen. Anyway, so the, the, the right hand man comes, it's called the alligator, because that's what I call the alligator comes back. Um, and then as it, as it ends up, uh, he's now the, the president of the country. Um, of course, the military is still in place, the, the, the ruling party, uh, Zen of PF, they're still in place. And not only that, when you look at it, uh, remember, Rob Mugabe is no dummy. And, uh, he ends up with a huge uh, a pension package. In fact, I think his salary is more than he would be getting, you know, if he was still president. So, so that's how that ends. Uh, basically, the second in command comes, the party stays in stays intact, right? Here in South Africa, they just had a, a conference for the ANC presidency. Um, the, um, the, the, the capitalist, super capitalist, neo capitalist, whatever, whatever kind of capitalist you want to call it, uh, Senator Ramaphosa, who was the deputy vice president of the country, he is now the president of the political party that's in power, that has the most, the most influence in the country, the African National Congress. And uh, now they're asking who the president, and that, that election will take place for the national, for the presidency will take place within two years. Okay, at the same time, you have, uh, there's calls for, uh, for Zuma, uh, the President Jacob Zuma, to, to resign, to step down, or whatever it is. Uh, in fact, there's a trial going on, that'll be going on, and I think it's going to be broadcast on TV, whatever's going to happen. But here's the, here's the trick with that. Remember, uh, uh, the, 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 the two biggest contestants was uh, Sarah Ramaphosa and then Zuma's first wife, let's call her Madam Zuma, uh, she, Zuma's first wife. Now, everybody said that, you know, if she was become president, that she was, he wasn't going to was jail or stuff, stuff like that. Uh, there's a couple of things with, with her. Remember, she was, uh, she did a very effective job as uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, but then she went to the, um, what was it, went to the AU, um, and that's sort of like a, you know, they don't do much, the AU doesn't do much, and then whatever it is. Uh, then she abruptly quit, quit in time to run for presidency of South Africa. That was her bona fide, so to speak. I don't want to say think of Hillary Clinton, because Hillary Clinton is just totally, you know, corrupt and just well hated. She's not, um, Madame Zuma was not well hated, but remember, we're still in a hugely patriarchal society, so there was, in my mind, there was just no way she was going to be president of this country. Not only that, if you really look at the, the, the women's uh, lead, the, the women's branch of the ANC, they're ineffectual too. So the women running the country right now is just not, not going to happen. Um, anyway, so Sir Ramaphosa is now there, um, and, and well, he hasn't, uh, if, if Zuma steps down, which, think about it now, if he gets impeached, then he loses all benefits, including for his, what, five wives, seven wives, I forget how many wives the guy got. Because what happens in a traditional wedding, uh, then you know, you're, supposedly your first wife is just the principal wife and all the other wives are sort of helpers to that first wife according to order. Um, but for some twisted thing, how they do South Africa, I shouldn't say twisted like that, but they do South Africa, they can mix the traditional with the so-called democracy, so each and every wife gets, actually gets a pension. Not only does, a, does Zumba will get a pension, but each wife will get a pension from him, uh, from him serving as president uh, for 10 years, or however long it's been, for two, uh, two terms. If he gets impeached, they lose everything. He doesn't get a pension, the wives don't get anything, blah, 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 blah. If he steps down, 
he gets the pension, you know, like Mugabe gets money, and why does everybody gets money, blah, blah, blah. So I don't see him, you know, going through that process, no matter how stubborn that process of being impeached and of being successful, and therefore he not getting no, you know, pension from all, the, all this stuff, okay? I just don't see it, okay? So let's, let's leave that. That's ongoing right now. A very wise man told me a, a couple of months ago, you know, you have to wait until January, which is now, uh, to see what's happening with the ANC. Uh, but, oh, I have to say one more thing. This whole thing, I, I may have said it before, but this whole thing, opposition party, all the rest of that stuff, this is, don't listen to that. There is no opposition party in politics, not in modern politics, not in democracy. Everybody's vying for, to, to, to find out how they can get some sort of slice of the pie, of the bigger pie. That's just the way it is. But the interesting thing about South Africa, especially, you do have an opposition party. There really does exist. It's just that they're ineffectual. The opposition party, the natural opposition party, if you want to put it that way, is the traditional leaders. They're not supposed to be in politics, but they got brought out. Some are in power, some are sitting in the parliament, some are not, you know, whatever it is. But the, the natural opposition party should be, I'm not talking about the unions because the unions are cool. I'm going to say that. The unions are, are the unions, you know, and they all split up and whatever it is. But the, but the, but in South Africa, at least in the South African context, you know, they're, they're, if the traditional leaders got some gumption, they can actually be the, the, the opposition party and do stuff for the common people. Let's put it that way. But let me get back off that because the last one I want to uh, just talk about for just a second is uh, the situation in the States, you know, the whole Donald Trump thing. You know, everything is a distraction. People don't get that, you know. This, and and, and, and what's, what will happen, and this is what I was concerned with from, from, the, from the beginning. First of all, Donald Trump never thought he was going to be president. I don't care what people say, whatever happened. It, 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 it was, you could see it could happen, but Hillary Clinton didn't do what she was supposed to do. That's why he's president. What she's supposed to do, she just didn't do it. I mean, let's put it that way. And plus, there's a whole lot of corruption going around. There's a whole lot of intrigue, this deep state thing, and all the rest of this stuff. Because everybody knows money laundering, you know, the old fashioned way of putting a king in house, but that's no good now. You set up a foundation, like Obama has a foundation, whatever, the presidential library, and then you contribute to that. That's how you hide your money. That's how you get your influence, or whatever have you. But we won't get into that right now. The biggest problem. Something ha happens to uh, Donald Trump, so as impeachment, whatever, it's not going to happen. Whatever's going to happen, then you get Pence. So what happens? The Republican Party or that, that section of the rulers stay intact. So this whole politics, modern politics, is about people staying intact. And people are just, they, they get swept up on these things. And all these laws are being passed to stop people from doing this and that, 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 that. But, you know, things, things are, 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 are interesting. Uh, 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 on the way, I should say, because there's, there's a whole thing called QAnon, Q A N O N, and this person is leaking all this. It's like it's like the deep throat of this generation, you know, you know uh, Watergate deep throat. There's all kinds of information about what's going on behind the scenes and coming, connecting the dots and whatever have you. And it's a fascinating thing. I don't have time to really study it because I got other things to study, right? But so this is all very interesting. Plus, just the whole consciousness, um, uh, because of the modern world or whatever have you. You have also the uh, um, uh, in politics, especially in black politics, people are not going to start being held accountable. You know, these, these, these uh, Congress people, whatever they are, that don't address the, the issues of their, of, their, um, of their constituency, they're going to start being called out because there is Twitter and Instagram, whatever have you. So while they're protesting this and that on a grander scale, the local stuff is being ignored. The local people are not looking at that, and so their local people are running. So 2018 election in the States is going to be very interesting. And we'll, we'll see what happens. So that's it for me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.